Hello, Joe here again, and it's great to be on your screen. Today, I'll be creating this beautiful Siberian Tigeress, and I'll be using these fantastic Montmartre pastel pencils. So sit back, relax, and let's get into it. Alrighty then, for my support, I'm using the Montmartre black sketching paper. As I said, for the pencils, I'm using the Montmartre pastel pencils and these are beautiful and soft. Have a look at them. In the box there are 60 pencils and they are contained in two layers of 30 pencils each. So before we start we need to create a colour chart showing the true colour of each one of the 60 pencils. So take a black sheet of paper, cut it to size so it fits in the lid of the box. Make the swatches uh, about a centimetre wide. Keep the colours relevant to where the pencils lie in the trays and leave a little gap between each colour. When you finish the first tray, start on the second but create it below the top line. Now trim the paper into the colours and then number each swatch. Now each colour has a number and it can be colour matched. Once you have all the numbers established, you might like to apply the appropriate number to the end of the pencil. Now let's draw up our tiger. There is a line drawing version of this artwork as well as a colour guide available in a downloadable PDF that you can find at montmart.net. So lay a sheet of tracing paper over the colour guide and trace all over the important elements. I'm using a Montmart fine tip marker for this. You will notice that I am putting in every bit of information that I can including shadow, contour lines and highlights. Now I turn the sheet over and retrace over every line that has been done in black with white pastel pencil. Try and get as much pigment onto the tracing paper as you can. Now tape the tracing paper pastel side down. Now we can transfer the white and rub it with a pencil. And voila! If you want to know which colour goes where, you will find a numbered line drawing that corresponds with your colour chart on the last page of the How to Draw a Tiger PDF. So I lay down a sheet of tracing paper as a smudge guard and I start at the top left hand side because I'll be working in this direction and I don't want to smudge my work with the back of my hand. So we'll start on the ear. For the colours, I can just impact my colour guide here and I can see that there's a six there, there's some white, number one, there's some purple here so there's a 20 number purple and what else is there, I think there's a number 50 sort of dirty orange and there's some charcoal and 59 and some black 60. So let's get into it. The whole philosophy I suppose behind this process of a colour application is short upward stabbing strokes that follow the direction of how the fur would naturally grow on an animal's body. Any underlying colours can be laid in first but pastels as a rule don't like to key onto heavy areas of colour like on the white of the ear here. Twist the pencil to create interesting lines and reinforce your depth by laying pure black into the shadow areas. Now continue on down the head. Remember the direction of the fur and build up your strokes one on top of another. Now the other ear. One thing I will mention is to keep a sharp point on your pencil with a bit of sandpaper. This will keep your strokes nice and fine. Moving on to the nose now, and again I follow the contours of the way the fur lies. A nice way to suggest a colour transition in fur is to bring one colour into another. You just have to leave areas free of colour to accept it in between the strokes. Like in between the white strokes, I lay yellow. This really adds interest. Now for the eye of the tiger. I start with some number 51 orange. Into that I lay in a bit of number 31 green and then I blend some number 3 yellow into that green. I then add some black around my tigress's eye. A dot of pure white to suggest a highlight, then I can create the other. I now work on the fur on her chest 
and for this section I keep my strokes long. Now I lay a base coat of orange and then yellow. The idea with this is that when I lay the white over the top it will tint it thereby suggesting the fur is slightly coloured. Well this is really taking shape so let's paint his nose and I'm using pink number eight and white to do this. So I lay in the white first and then I lay in the pink and blend them where they meet. What a cute little nose you have Miss Tiger. Now I lay in some grey into the mouth area to suggest shadow and into that I add the white. Time now to add our black and this really adds dimension especially because this black is darker than the paper. As I apply my black I am mindful to let some of that black of the paper show through. For the ultra highlights I apply some white with an ultra soft pastel. This is optional but I like it because it lays down such a heavy layer of pigment. The edge is fantastic for laying in those whiskers. Give the pastel a twist to ensure a sharp edge. Think carefully about each whisker. Dodgy whisker placement could really compromise our tigeress. The last colour we'll be putting on our portrait is a blue 21 and we'll just be laying that in the highlight areas just as a little blue tinge. Well I've got to tell you I'm really happy with the way that worked out and I hope you try this project because I think I've demystified it a little bit. They're a truly wonderful creature and if you get some time do a bit of research on the Siberian tiger. Until next time, keep on painting. Thank you.